Alrighty, so to get started for this one, I'm just going to hit Shift A, go to Mesh, and grab myself a plane here. I'm just going to scale that up. Hit S and 2 to scale it up a little bit. I'll press Control A and apply the rotation and scale. So I'm going to go ahead and do the shading tab. And as you can see here, I have my node editor and my workspace. This is the world editor, so I'm just going to drop this down and switch to object. Then over here, I'll go to my rendered preview. I'm using cycles. I'm going to hit 7 to go to the top or the graphic view. Or you can go ahead and hit the Z on the little gizmo thing you got here. So then I'm going to press new. I'm going to type in it's like metal grate, or you can call it whatever you want. Then to get started, we're going to hit shift A and we're going to be searching up a Voronoi texture. Just like this. And then we're going to make sure we have the node regular add on checked in our preferences. So I'll press file. I mean, edit preferences. Oops, uh, that's not what I meant to do. Edit preferences, <laughs> then go to add-ons, node wrangler, and then hit the checkbox. Then with this selected now, you have all the shortcuts, so you can press control T, and we've got this. So if I control shift and left click this guy, we can get a nice preview. So I'm gonna take our UV coordinates and plug it into the vector here. And the reason we're using UV coordinates is because it'll map around any object with a UV unwrap. Whereas something like object will sort of distort this in a weird way if we put it on something like a cube or an icos or some or a bad sort of sphere with bad unwraps. But anyways, that's why UV coordinates are better. So I'm actually going to be changing the mapping rotation a little bit. So I'm going to change the rotation to a 45, and then I'm going to change the Y scale to a 45, uh, 0.45 might to be specific. And what that's going to do is if I hit Shift A and I search for a map range node here, I'm going to go ahead and up the contrast between these two so we can tell the difference. So I'm going to bring this from minimum to a 0.425, and then the front mac from maximum down to a 0.435, just like that. Then I'm going to take the randomness down to a zero. And what this uh, is doing on the mapping is it's making giving us our pattern that we want. And because obviously we bring this deck down to a zero, then everything is aligned perfectly. But if I bring this to a 45, then it sort of staggers as it should which is super cool. And obviously you can also do some other stuff with it, but it sort of kind of weirds out and things. So we're not gonna mess with that. So then I'm gonna take the scale on this Voronoi and bring it up to like a 40. You can obviously make it different sizes for whatever you're doing. If you think it's too big, you can leave it at a 20. I think 20 is actually good. So I'll leave it there for now. So then we're going to be changing this into a better mask. So I'm gonna hit shift A and search for a math node here. I'm going to make sure that it is a function as greater than and I'll plug this result into our value and then change the threshold to a 0 0.01. So this is going to make sure everything's a pure black or a pure white. So then I can grab this guy and I'm going to factor this into our bump as well. So I'll hit shift A and search for a bump node just like this. I can take this value and plug it into our height and then this normal into the normal. And if I control shift and left click the shader, we can see that we have our bump showing up nicely here. And if I go down to the side, we can see our shadows better. So something that we can also do is if you want this to factor into the alpha of your floor grate, if you want it to be see-through where the holes are, you can also take this value and plug it into your alpha and that'll make everything where the holes are see-through. So that's something you can do if you wanted to, but you don't have to because we'll cover everything in between. But if you wanted it to be like a see-through pothole or something, you can always just plug that in. Anyways, this next step, we're going to be doing some sort of brushed metal effect on this. So we're gonna press Shift A and search for a noise texture, just like this. Then I'll Control Shift and left click to preview. Then I'm gonna take our mapping into the vector. Then I'm gonna press Shift A and search for another map range node, just like this. I'll take the from minimum to a 0.2, and then the from max down a little bit to bring the contrast in. Then I'm gonna take this scale up to 100, so that it's a lot finer, more like that. Then this detail, I'll move it up to a 10, just like that. And you can even up the roughness if you want to. I'm gonna leave it at a 0.5 though, but you can do whichever you prefer. Then for the colors on this, I'm gonna hit Shift A and search for a mix RGB right here. And plug this map range into the factor. Then on this color one, I'll go ahead and give you a hex value. I'm gonna be using an E5, E4, E2. Again, that is an E5, E4, E2, just like that. Then this color two, I'm gonna be using a D4C. FC6. Again, that is a D4C, FC6, just like that. So now we have our two colors. They're both pretty bright, but they are slightly hint. They are slightly off-white. So then we hit Shift A, 
and I'm going to search for another mix RGB. And this is going to separate our colors from what's on the bottom and what's on top. So I'm going to take this greater than into our factor. Then I'm going to move these over here. I'm going to plug this color both into color two and color one. And then I'm going to hit shift day and search for a hue saturation node. And I'm going to put those and then duplicate it, obviously, and then put that in between these two. So now on this color one, I can lower the value a little bit. And if I preview this one with control shift left click, you can see now that we have two different colors for our thing, depending on what we change with the value. We can obviously up the saturation on these as well if we want to, things like that. And then I'm just gonna grab everything and give us a little bit more space. So I'm gonna grab this, move it over here. Then I'm gonna press one of these hue saturations. I'll hit shift D and move it over here as well. So now we can adjust the hue, saturation, and value as a whole. And so I'll plug this color into the base color. Then if I control shift and left click this guy, I'm going to now up the metallic to a one, just like this, sick. And then I'm going to take this saturation and you can all, you can up this to like a two. You can even up, to, up it to a five and it sort of looks like it's much older. And then you can drop the value on this maybe. And then you get sort of this rusty effect and you can drop the value on these individually. So like you can make this like a 0.5. If you do that, I recommend making this lower than that, like a 0 0.2, 0 0.3. If you're trying to fake the shadows, do something like that. And then you can get some cool old great effects. You can also lower the saturation on these individually and now you can also up it and it'll change things as a whole. So you can do cool things like that. And you can also factor this guy into the bump a little bit. So you can hit shift day, I'll search for a bump node, place that in between these two. I'm gonna take this result into the height. And if we preview it, obviously we can see that's way too much. So I can take the strength down to like a 0.1 and then it's really subtle. And then we can, I'll show you what the alpha looks like again. So we can take this greater than, plug it into our alpha, and we have this cool metal grate that we can use over things. And to prove that it's see-through, I'm gonna hit Shift-A, search for mesh, let's grab another plane without that. I'll hit Grab and Z, let's move it down. And we can see that plane through here nicely. I'll go ahead and give it a random material, something like, let's say, bamboo, why not? And now we can see through it quite nicely. Anyways, that is the finished material. You can obviously play with the roughness. I think it looks really good on a 0.5. You can up it if you want it to be less reflective, if you want it to look older, and the newer you want it to look, obviously, you can drop it. But most of these metal grates are not going to be very reflective. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and learned some new things, how to use alpha and how to maybe fake some shadows in here. But yeah, um, I will see y'all guys in another one in the future. Adios.